so during the break I had uh, two more orders come in and I just pretty much gathered them together and prepared them so you can see exactly what goes on here in the process of uh, processing the order so we already talked about pretty much um, separating them into categories uh, the bulk the uh, single pieces and then the multiple piece orders okay so the next step is after I process them into the computer uh, as we showed uh, before using the um, the software program the next thing is uh, we prep them for storage okay because it might be a circumstance where I don't have time to start working on the order but I like to have them prep for uh, when I do have time to work for the order so I also have the responsibility of maintaining the order in um, uh, the way it was presented to me so for example uh, the order that came in during the break were these uh, pillowcases so I have to make sure that those pillowcases remain in the same fashion that they were given to me so what's going to happen is they were already processed using the system that I have but I'm going to also place them in plastic just to make sure that they're clean for when I want to uh, work on them and uh, start doing the embroidery part and for gift basket orders and this would be that yellow slip the fabrics and everything uh, the majority of the materials or the contents of the gift basket is going to be placed it's um, waiting here in the bucket that I intend to use. Now, a lot of times after I embroider the order or uh, sew uh, the items that are to be sewn, it doesn't fit within the intended bucket. But I have a room, literally a, a small bedroom that is dedicated to storage and I have nothing but baskets in all sizes and shapes and so forth. So that's what you see here. Oh, that's my phone. In this area, this is my work desk. Uh, this is the area that I sew and I embroider. Um, I do have a multi-needle machine. Um, I will show you that area of um, the room uh, in another part of the video. But for the most part, this is my work desk. Um, this is not where I process the orders. I do have a separate office for that. But for the most part, this is the area where the order uh, begins being worked on, especially if it's some um, sewing. And this is the area that um, I also store orders that are either priority or um, are being worked on. Uh, so while they're in progress, they are stored in this um, cabinet here. And they are stored in these buckets if they can fit in these small buckets, okay? And then I have a rem reminder um, of what orders of what. So if I have a new person or a family member other than my assistant helping me out, they know that uh, what these color code slips stand for. And then over here in this area, the slots are filled with the orders and what happens is after the order is processed like so it goes into this slot now remember the colors that I use are white slips yellow slips and pink slips so I have a little basket here and I keep a uh, pink and yellow markers there I don't have to do anything to the white part of it because the paper is already white but if the this is a gift basket without even looking at the details of the order I can tell you that this order is a gift basket order because what we do is we mark a line and then just put it here and then I store this order would be a multiple piece order put it there and then we fill it up accordingly okay so that is how I store uh, the paperwork but let me show you how we uh, put together the uh, the order so I'm going to grab a basket here actually I want to grab a couple of them because I know a couple of the orders over there are gonna fit here I'll just grab three for now And then I'm going to take you back over to the table. Okay, so I am back at my uh, cutting table where I have the orders are waiting for me. So for starters, we already know that these are not going into that. And so what I use is I use large bins for uh, when I have 
big bulk orders and I do have a separate office where I process the orders I'll show you that part in another video uh, but for the most part we're just worried about or concerned about how these are going to be stored at the moment so for starters being that I am holding the camera with my right hand I am going to try to show you with my left hand so bear with me I'm going to try not to shake the camera too much so if I could just okay so I have this empty bin so for starters, remember, anything with a colored brad goes with me. So that's the one that I'll be working on. So this is going to go in here. And then the slip is going to be folded. And it's going to be placed into this slot. Of course, it's not going to go in there because... I'm using one hand, okay, it's working. And then, this is gonna go in here. This is the specialty thread that I'm gonna be using, so that's gonna be in there. Then for the next one, I have the uh, pillowcases. So, these will go inside of the, the bag. Now, this is what the pillowcases came in, and I don't ever throw any of the customer's items away. If they want to toss them when they come pick it up, that's up to them. And I have to take off, now remember this, I'm using a red brad here. See that? I want to take this off, and it's just a simple little, I don't know if you can see that, screw there. So you just open it up pretty much, and spread it apart and then close it together when you want to take off the slit so that goes inside of there because this is the um, the slip that I'm going to be using that's the cardboard and then I'm going to um, Pause the camera for a minute so I can properly place the uh, the pillowcases inside of the, uh, the plastic cellophane bag. So I've already went ahead and I've already packed the first three orders that I want to show you. And just to kind of go through them, again, I packed the pillowcases in plastic. It also has the, the process slip that I'm going to be doing the order on. And then, let's see. Here. On the uh, the pink slip, it's going to have the uh, the due date, and um, it's also going to tell me who this belongs to. Okay, so this uh, would be somewhat of a priority order because it's due within the next seven days. And then if we look at this one, this one is actually due on Monday. So I'll show you also how I process. Uh, or how I managed to keep track of priority orders as well. Uh, but for the most part, this little frame here, like all the other frames, was made with my using my big kick, and I didn't put any fabric or anything on it because these are in and out so often. I do have some clear plastic protecting the um, protecting the slip, so clear plastic is behind it. But I didn't put any fabric on it because the fabric only comes off after a while. And then this is just placed in here, and it also has the um, the slip and the thread. Now, for the gift baskets, it's a little bit different. The process is a little bit more involved, and I'll show you why. I'm going to pull this close. Okay, so remember, this was the bucket that I plan or I intend to pack the contents in. So we're just going to place that aside. But everything here is in plastic, okay? So I have the, the teddy bear. And then I have the quilt that I intend to use, the book, the diapers, and even the toiletries. They're taken out of the box and they are placed in um, a little Ziploc bag because just in the event that it comes open, we want to prevent spillage or any damage to the, um, the merchandise that the customer has provided or my fabric. So basically I have another order to pack 
and I wanted to show you pretty much everything gets packed really okay so even starting with the the sample diapers that come in I have a smaller cellophane bag that will go in there because we want those to be clean too they are going on little infants and we don't want any dust or anything on their little bottoms if the mom decides that she wants to use the diapers that are inside of the gift basket so we'll just place that aside and then we'll take this out take this out and then these fabrics take the book out these fabrics going to all be packed together in the cellophane bag and then I will open this up and I will also pack this in a sandwich ziploc bag and then we'll grab one of these totes to pack it all in and then I'll show you how I store them okay so I went ahead and I uh, packed all of the contents for this basket in cellophane plastic like I said I would and just wanted to show you how it's pretty much packed into this little tote okay and so from here we take it over to the cabinet and we store it so let me show you the system that I have for uh, storing these uh, work in progress orders okay so I am by the cabinet and I have already placed the other orders inside of the cabinet like so okay so this is not going to fit in that area with that uh, bucket on top so what we do here is we place the bucket in first so that's going to go on top there that it all goes in okay and then what happens is I have a drawer because it is a dresser remember I, this is one of my free dressers uh, from my neighbors they were going to toss it and what happens is I want to direct your attention back to the slip let me see if I could get a good shot on that okay so this tells me the date that this is due who it belongs to but if you look at the last line there it says red bucket number four okay so that's gonna tell me where I'm going to place this red bucket so it's going to go into drawer number four now there's a blue bucket here already first let's get the blue one inside there and that blue one is for the other order okay so in the event that I grab this order and I want to work on this order and I complete it I know that I have the bucket that I intended to pack it in the blue bucket is going to be in drawer number four so when I open up drawer number four even though there's a red one in there don't care about the red one because I know that the blue bucket belongs to this order now the system that I use for storing the buckets are very simple. These is uh, marked with uh, the foam numbers that you get from the Dollar Tree. And I have drawer number 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. And basically, um, it's just a simple system that works. You know, I don't have to look for buckets and baskets and so forth when we are ready to pack the order. It's right there. And uh, it's a system that is very simple. And that's what I like. Now I want to direct your attention to priority, how I keep an eye on my priority orders. Once again, another simple system. Okay, so because this order is due within the next seven days, I consider it a priority, especially at the fact that I didn't start it yet. So I need to get started on this order, okay? The problem is I also have those 33 fleece. Uh, I'm sorry, it's not 33. Those fleeces over there on my uh, table that also needs to be uh, delivered on Monday as well. But I do have multiple machines, so we will make it work. But basically, what I do is 
I use these little tags and these little tags are uh, simply from the Dollar Tree and they are uh, heared with these little foam double back uh, foam pop-ups that they have okay and this one also is considered priority so when I I'm just gonna back up a little bit when I open this cabinet the first thing that's going to pop out at me at glance at the at the first glimpse of what's in this cabinet is the two priority uh, orders that are due I store the tags very close so I don't have to look for those as well and these tags once again do come from the Dollar Tree I have a marker here I have the scissors and I have these little uh, foam adhesive double at ad double side adhesive um, pop-ups and what I usually do is um, I have loads of these I always keep these in stock because these are tossed away items um, so for example what I normally do is cut them in half okay so if we refer back to the way that look I cut them in half mark whatever I'm going to mark up there and that hear it and I also take out let me see if I can turn this over for you Let's see. I also use a little square and I cut that at, in half as well that's why I have plenty of these so that's going to go a long way. I literally cut it in half and put one half on one part of the um, one part of the tag and put the other half on another part of the tag or save it. And remember, it's double pack, double back, so you're not going to waste it. And pretty much that is how I store the work in progress orders. That is how I keep track of the priority orders and down here is how I stored the buckets for the orders and then in this area once again are where the um, the slips are going to be placed now I have some slips that I need to uh, actually fill some of the slots up with and orders that are due later on, let's say, for example, I'm working on a baby shower bib invitation orders and I'm doing, let's say, 50 of them. But the baby shower isn't until June and the order isn't due until May. That order would not go anywhere in this facility. I will show you uh, where I stock long-term orders or orders that are pretty much far, that do far away. They are not in this area. This area is specifically for orders that are due at least under 30 days or so, so I can really keep a track on them. I also wanted to show you the book that I use for the slips because someone had asked on the uh, the Facebook group Embroidery Boss that I am the president and host of, they had asked me about the slips. And the slips is really a simple book, sales order book that you can get from Walmart, Staples, that kind of thing. This one actually is the was the wrong one, but we still use it because we use it on an individual basis. So what happens is this doesn't have the pink, so if I'm going to do, let's say, uh, a gift basket order, I just literally rip a, a yellow slip out and jot down the information. And because um, we don't care about duplicates, that number doesn't mean anything. This number, because we only care about the color. But once again, these books can be found at your um, office supply store or your super centers, anywhere really. They're, they're not hard to find at all, and they are not expensive at all. And you know that I like inexpensive systems and nothing that's too complicated. It doesn't have to be fancy. It just needs to be functional, and this system works for me. Lastly, for bulk orders such as the uh, the fleeces that I showed you that I'll be working on, this is a multiple fleece. They are stored in these large bins, 
okay and they are stored in my office okay because I don't like to have anything that is uh, embroidery related um, in the sewing studio because this is a pretty much a classroom and I have people coming in and I can't take the chance of something getting stolen God forbid or dirty or misplaced I just can't so my office uh, for embroidery my embroidery business remember I run Candia Hainsworth designs which is CandiaHainsworth.com, which is an embroidery and monogramming business and I run a sewing workshops uh, from my home all from my home they are two businesses two separate things so I try to run it accordingly that is one of the reasons why I have an area in my in my uh, sewing classroom that my desk is my desk and um, then I have my embroidery machine and it's not in the area where the sewing machines are kept so for the most part what I like to do is on bulk orders I like to take a few out that I'm going to be working on so let's say for example I'll be starting with uh, the um, hot mango the hot mango fleece and then the other ones are stored um, this is a, a uh, a very simple and easy system that I have once again these bins are four bucks at Walmart not expensive at all um, and for the most part to be quite frank I would break up these two the, this order and put it into two bins so I can uh, cover the top to keep it nice and clean so basically that is how I uh, store the the orders that are in progress to be worked on or being worked on coming up next you will uh, see the next system that I have for um, uh, tracking orders or shipping out orders I haven't decided which I'm going to do um, next but I also before I move on forward I wanted to also show you the system the software program that I use for um, processing my orders and how I develop my templates and so forth that's also a part of managing to have a good system in place so maybe that's what I'll do next and then I will go on to show you more storage techniques and routines and uh, give you a little glimpse of a, a studio tour all right, thank you so much for joining in uh, on part two. Uh, stay tuned for part three and four and five. And if you like this so far, you like the series or the other hundred plus videos that I have, please uh, click below and subscribe to my channel. And until then, I'll see you next time.